Hello everybody, I'm the Mechanic Gone Rogue. Previously, I made a video demonstrating an aluminum air battery that I made out of everyday items. Today, I have another aluminum air battery. You could call it aluminum air battery 2.0. It's got lots of upgraded materials, it features an acidic electrolyte, and it has an upgraded design. Best of all, it's got more power than the previous version. If you haven't seen my first video, check it out because I'm gonna be referencing a lot today. The link's right above me and in the description. Like last time, I've included a list of materials that I used to build the battery. Some of them have a link as well. This is something new that I'm trying out. I bought those materials on Amazon. If you use those links to purchase something, I'm an associate and I may get some money as well. Which, if you're thinking about getting some of the same materials as me, is a great way to support my channel. I would like to point out quickly, do not try this if you're not a trained professional. I have spent a lot of time reading up on this before I did it, and I have safety measures in place in case something goes wrong. Make sure to check out my full disclaimer also in the video description. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Probably the biggest change about this battery is the electrolyte. I read online that you can use acidic electrolytes in aluminum air batteries, but a lot of industrial applications prefer not to use that because the anode gets corroded quite quickly. Nonetheless, I learned by doing things and my curiosity was piqued. So, I set about making an acidic electrolyte. My goal for this electrolyte was to create something with a higher power output than my original battery. Oh, and if I could not have a product at the end that melted my face off, <coughs> potassium hydroxide. That'd be great too. So I started off with 110 milliliters of 5% vinegar as the base. Now a 5% solution in my mind is a little too weak. I wanted to bump up the concentration a bit. Now I could have condensed the vinegar by boiling it, but that leaves a really unpleasant smell. So I mixed in a different type of acid, uh, citric acid. I found 20 grams of powdered citric acid was a good amount. Now I've got my acidic solution, but I wasn't completely happy with it. I wanted to increase the capacity of my electrolyte to carry an electrical charge. Adding some salt would be nice. However, I can't add just regular table salt because regular salt water is actually a weak alkaline solution. If I added that to my acidic electrolyte, it would neutralize it and I'd be back to square one. Q, potassium chloride. Potassium chloride is also a salt. However, its pH is neutral because it's produced from a reaction with a strong base, potassium hydroxide, and a strong acid, hydrochloric acid. I found that 20 grams at room temperature is the maximum amount this solution can dissolve. The mixture does come out a bit cloudy, but I believe that's normal and I haven't had any problems because of that. Next up, I've made some changes to the cathode. I think that all of these were actually inspired by various comments left on my previous video. So a quick thank you to everybody who commented last time and shared their ideas. If you guys have any suggestions for future batteries, be sure to let me know down in the comments and I might just be able to include them in future designs. First up, I've changed my cathode to activated charcoal. I read up on this after I saw it in the comments and I can definitely see how it would be an improvement. The carbon has been treated and that increases the surface area of it and thus it can absorb more oxygen. I could have made some myself, but I found a really cheap option online and I decided to go with that. Secondly, I removed the paint as a binder. I got rid of the paint because someone mentioned it is inhibiting the carbon from absorbing air because only the top layer is actually in contact with air. You know what? That makes sense. Rather than use paint in my design, I simply use some of my electrolyte. My theory is that as the electrolyte goes into the paper towel, the carbon will actually dry and thus leaves plenty of surface area for oxygen reduction. All right, let's get into the new structure. So much of this redesign is focused around opening up the cathode. I accomplished this by using popsicle sticks and playing cards to create a roof over the cathode so that the next cell sits on the roof and not the cathode itself. Now that you've seen all the changes I've made, I'm gonna go through building one of these cells and then we can see what difference these changes actually make. First, before I build anything, I'm gonna pre-cut my aluminum foil, paper towel, saran wrap, and popsicle sticks. Again, I'm gonna use my playing card for reference. I want to make my saran wrap at least three times the width of the card and about a quarter of an inch longer lengthwise. The aluminum foil and paper towel, I want to make them slightly smaller length and widthwise 
than the playing card. To help increase the speed and accuracy of cutting everything, I got this handy card cutter. For the popsicle sticks, I used scissors to cut them down to the same length as the playing cards. I'm going for a 10 cell battery again, so I'm going to cut 10 of these for everything except for the popsicle sticks. I need 20 of those. Because the popsicle sticks are substantially thicker than my previous building materials, I opted to change out some of the materials and assembly methods for thinner alternatives. Rather than building each part of the cell individually, I combined everything into individual cells first. I switched out my trusty duct tape for thinner packing tape. I substituted some of my playing cards for thinner saran wrap and I got some copper tape instead of copper mesh. Next, I go straight into building my cell. I'm gonna start with one of my saran wrap pieces. Then I will put one of my copper foil pieces in the center like so. Because this is the bottom anode, I'll put a strip of copper so that it's sticking out. This will be my negative terminal. As a side note, I tried to remove copper from the battery design as well and just have the charcoal be its own current conductor. This is because there's a side reaction between copper and aluminum and apparently copper aluminum batteries are a thing, which I didn't know about before. Unfortunately, the charcoal does a poor job of this and I struggled to get continuity between multiple cells. I do have plans to try to see if graphite sheet or graphite rods does a better job of this, but I had to order those in and they haven't shown up yet. So I'm stuck with copper for now. Next, I want to build my roof onto the saran wrap, right beside the piece of aluminum foil that I just placed. The idea is that once I'm finished building my cell, I can fold the roof onto it. First, I'll use a little bit of packing tape and attach two of my popsicle sticks lengthwise to the sides of my playing card. Then I use more packing tape over the sticks and the card to attach it to the saran wrap. This step has the additional benefit of waterproofing the roof so that any electrolyte that does get on it for whatever reason does not get absorbed. Then I'll take one of my paper towel pieces and put it on top of the aluminum. I'll stick a strip of copper onto it, and because the copper is quite flimsy, I have chosen to stick my next anode onto the end that is protruding. I'll dampen the paper towel with electrolyte and paint my charcoal paste onto it. Finally, I fold my saran wrap and roof over the cell like so. I wrap the excess saran wrap around the cell and secure it with a tape. At the same time, I seal off the end with tape as well. Then a quick voltage check before I move on to building the next cell on top of it. At the end, once all 10 cells are completed, I can secure them together with a strip of packing tape. All right guys, I've put everything together. We've got our new battery. Now let's see what kind of numbers this guy is putting out. Just as a size comparison, I have my old battery right here. You can see that it's definitely thicker, and that's from the uh, popsicle sticks that I'm using. Uh, but I am hoping that the size difference uh, pays off and I get a little bit more power out of this. First, let's check the voltage. Now, when I was building this, I found that each cell put out roughly the same amount as salt water, which is about 0.5 volts. Uh, so I would expect the voltage to be roughly about the same as my previous battery. There we go. We got uh, 5.7, almost 5.8 volts, which is definitely an improvement over last time. Last time we peaked out at 5. There we go. Poor connection. And I think the reason why uh, I'm getting that extra 0.7 is because the saran wrap does a better job of sealing each cell and I'm not losing anything to uh, due to the fact that the cells are arcing out. At least that's my theory anyways. Okay, now let's check the amperage. Now, when I was testing this electrolyte, this is where I found that I got much better performance than salt water. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what this number is. I'm really hoping that it's gonna be substantially higher. Oh, wow. All right, so as you saw there, it jumped to about uh, 30 milliamps, uh, which is a, a third of an amp. Uh, and then it's holding steady at about 13, 12 milliamps which is still a lot better than the previous battery. All right, to give a quick kind of idea as to how much of improvement we got here, I've got that same LED light that I used last time, and we're gonna see if it's any brighter than previously.
There we go. I'd say that's at least a little bit brighter. Isn't that cool? There we go. Definitely an improvement from before. And with that, I'm done for today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Overall, I'm really pleased with the results of this battery and I'm excited to see what kind of improvements I can make in the future. If you wanna see more batteries and fun projects, be sure to subscribe because I got more on the way. Lastly, if you wanna support my channel and the videos that I make, you can follow the link down in the description and buy me a coffee. Thank you all again for watching. I'll see you next time. MGR signing out.